Greek scholars, I think, will get it right. But the word is something like graphi, as scriptures. That has to do with the original. That has to do with divine writ, holy writ, produced that way. It can be trusted. It's what God had written. In verse 15, the word for scriptures is not the same word. It's grammi. And that means letter, book, epistle. You say, oh, you've got a contradiction. No, actually both words come from the same root word. I checked with three scholars, one on the platform behind me, another one, and then a friend of mine, his name's, I went to the Greek, his name's Nicholas, he pastors a church in Athens. He's very conversant in both New Testament Greek and modern Greek and English. And he said, well, they're about synonymous. You could use one this way or the other that way. They come from the same root. They really mean the same thing. They mean Bible or scriptures. Well, why did God use two different words? I'll tell you why. Timothy wasn't reading the copy that God had sent by process of inspiration. And so with words that were synonyms, he makes a subtle distinction that the Greek scholars can sort out. That's beyond me. I just can report what Strong's Concordance says and what I learned that way. But there is a distinction there that does not show up in our English Bible. It does not show up in our English Bible. Now the word inspiration, and we heard it properly pronounced earlier. Uh, I will give you the uh, country boy expression. Uh, Theonostis. Does that even sound similar? Theonostis. You heard it right from him. It's a translation difficulty. And so they put it so you can have a fuller understanding of what God had said in a language you don't know, and now you can read it in a language you do know. They were not changing. They were throwing light. For example, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, the word aired is in there twice, but it has two different meanings. You might want to check on that because it will help you understand. There's a meaning below the surface. Actually, it goes many levels below the surface when you get studying the Bible. of strengths in our language, but how many words do we have for scriptures to distinguish the subtle differences that God would give, such as that in 2 Timothy 3, 15, 16, words that are synonyms, but they're not identical, and God's trying to make a point about the word air, about the word power, gradual force of power, or that which breaks in with a sudden force, and we call it power. And then we try to figure out how to explain it. Uh, which edition was given by inspiration? Which one had the exact inspired words? What was I supposed to do? From 1611 to 1769, they worked on it. And then from the 1769, there's a variety. Three particular ones I'll name, the Cambridge, the Oxford, and the Nelson. Multiple editions. By the way, the accurate translation is the Cambridge 1769, which we commonly call 1611 King James.